I gotta say, dude, that guitar sounds great. It does. Uh, what a great job Gibson has done. Now, now tell us a little something about the guitar for a second here. What's going on here? So this guitar is uh, the the new Charlie Star signature, Les Paul Jr. Nice. And it's based on my 1956 Gibson Les Paul Jr. That is an old black refinished guitar. I've seen that guitar. The guitar and is beat. It's a it's beaten and it's a Frankenstein. It's <clears throat> got a lot of modifications and changed parts mm -hmm. since since the 50s since it was born but yeah i think most of that stuff happened in the 70s but this guitar is a a recreation of that idea with the compensated saddle bridge speed knobs grovers um, and some black paint yeah now i'm looking at the bridge the bridge is a little different because i've got the traditional you know lightning wrap around here mm -hmm. but you've got it to where you can uh there's, there's a little more control on the intonation on that one yeah right? i think people um oh i think originally you know wrap around tail pieces were designed to use a wound g-string in yeah. the 50s and obviously people decided against that at some point yeah and uh when so, we started playing leads right so yeah. as soon as people started bending the g-string they're like oh i need something sure I need those banjo strings Gibson obviously was making ABR ones that had, uh, but peop, what I mean is that people with juniors with wraparound, you know, bridges wanted more control also of the, of the intonation, right? So there, you, I like it. There you go, dude. Um, it's great, and I like the flat black. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I just so happen to have your uh, it comes in any other finishes as well. I think we've got uh, comes in walnut, walnut. Uh, which is right behind me, as a matter of right fact. Right there. Yeah, yeah. So hey, look at that. Hey, hey. It's a, <laughs> I wonder who put that there. Um, no, that's that's a it's a killer guitar. I'm always a little nervous when I approach something with just one pickup, and then like yeah. plugging into a junior, it was like you don't need anything else. Yeah. I mean, I'm playing the special today just because I wanted to get the neck in there to to kind of stay out of the way when we do some jams in a little bit. Yeah. Um, but man, it's just really nice to hear that single pickup uh, just just do its thing. So. On this guitar, what's the story on, on, on you getting that junior? Well, I moved to Atlanta in the early 90s from uh, East, East Alabama, a um, little, little uh, textile mill town I grew up in. Atlanta was the closest big city. It was an hour and change away. And uh, soon after I moved there, I started going to little mom-and-pop guitar stores and happened upon this the guitar in uh, Clark Music in Atlanta, which is no longer there, but uh, I met a lifelong friend there who sold me that guitar. Oh. And he he sort of, he was like matchmaker. I walked in and he was like, we met. And he's like, you play guitar? I said, yeah. He goes, come over here. And I don't know, he doesn't know why he did either, but he said, come check this guitar out. It belonged to Rick Richards from the Georgia Satellites, mm. who is one of my favorite guitar players ever. Yeah. And it belonged to a few other people in Atlanta as well, but he pulled that guitar off the wall, and it was love at first feel. Wow. To quote Bon Scott. Um, but I plugged it in, and he said, you have to have... We, we bonded that guitar and I pretty instantaneously, and I think my buddy Ted um, could tell. And he's like, you need to buy this guitar. And so I said, how much? And he said, $650. And I no. thought, at that point, I was... I think I was 21 years old. I was either 20 or 21 years old. And he might as well have said six million. I was like, six, who's got $650? Sure. But I said, I tell you what, I've got some other gear and I got a little cash. And so we made the deal and it's been with me ever since. No kidding. Man, it's always funny to hear a story about a special guitar. It seems like it's when there's a special guitar involved in someone's life, it's always like it was with someone or a few players before, it seems like. Yeah. You know, you hear the stories about that. Well, like, oh, you know, you used to belong to so-and-so or so-and-so gave it to them. Or, you know, when I think like the Jimmy Page, Les Paul, or, and, or, or you know, even how Stevie Ray got his Strat and all that mm -hmm. kind of thing. It was always ended up being someone else's, you know, touch or fingerprint on it. And then it comes to the story. Yeah. Well, and I had already been playing in cover bands in my late teens, you know, playing around honky tonks and the Southeast. And so it already been playing, you know, mountain songs and Georgia satellite songs. And uh, I really loved Johnny Thunders. And, um, of course, Keith Richards, he played juniors from time to time too. And, uh, Mick Ralph's yeah. bed company and Martha Hoople. He was a big junior guy. So I think in the, maybe without even knowing it, I had an affinity for the P90 thing. 
I got gotcha. you. That makes just sense. Just because those guys were all favorites. Yeah. You know, you know what? That's funny. That's the people I think about. Um, yeah, because I was going to ask you about like some of the influences and stuff as you were, um, you know, growing up. So yeah, you're sounding like you're listening to all the right stuff. Yeah, and um, lucky for me, you know. Um, yeah. But I, I wasn't into a lot of the music that some of my friends were um, that had like pointy headstock guitars and and uh, Floyd Rose. Floyd Rose tremolos, you know, I, I couldn't mm. do any of that stuff, so I gravitated more towards the rootsier guitar stuff. 